Amen. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you for this time that we've had to worship you and prepare and ready our hearts for the preaching of your word. And God, we pray and ask right now that you would anoint Stephen as he preaches. Holy Spirit, that um, as he declares your, your truth, that we would listen uh, with uh, receptive hearts and ears. And God, we would obey and apply everything that we learned today into our lives to bring you much glory and to bring you much honor. And Father, I pray that we would be transformed by sitting under the authority of your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Stephen comes, um, you can be seated. If, you, if you're if you wondering today why we haven't dismissed the kids, on if you're a guest with us, the first Sunday of every month we have what we call Family Fellowship Sunday. And the idea for this is any if you have a child between the ages of zero to three, you can uh, they can be in the nursery. But we want our children in here at least once a month worshiping and sitting under the preaching of the word so that uh, they can see mom and dad worship, lift their hands, sing. They can sit under the word. If, if you are a, a parent, um, when you came in, you, you probably received a, a guide, a, a children's sermon guide, and they can color on that, and there's activities on that. And, and after the service, if they go back and they see Miss Kelly, our children's ministry director, they can get a gummy worm if they have a question for her from the sermon. So kids, pay attention and listen up. Uh, Stephen, preach the word to us today, brother. We're looking forward to it. Come on out here so we can see you. You're not as tall as I am, so I, I want them to. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings to you. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. It's, it's great to be here this morning, and uh, we are honored to uh, participate in the worship together with you and to lift up our voices to the Lord and, and, and be in the presence of the Lord together with you. Uh, and I want to... Uh, honor and respect Pastor Mark Hess for inviting me to uh, speak to you today and uh, and just to be with you and um, my family and I are honored to uh, to be here um, I will be I will be preaching this morning um, uh, or whatever you might call it it might uh, some people call it preaching but I'll be talking to you um, uh, uh, about uh, a text that is in, in the book of Malachi, um, and it's chapter 3. For those who have been in the Lord for a little bit, uh, when they hear Malachi chapter 3, the first thing they, they, they think about is tithes and offerings and, and, and people telling them that how can you rob God? You are robbing God by not paying your tithes and offerings. Uh, well, we'll talk about that, but not today. Uh, uh, what, what is of interest to, uh, to me today is uh, the, the text that is starting from uh, verse 13 up until verse 18. There is something that I want us to, to look at today. And we're trying to answer the question today um, that many people ask wrongly. Um, the, the way that people ask this question many times is that they, they say, uh, what's in it for me? Okay, they get into something they get into a relationship, they get into a church, they belong to a club, they belong to um, an organization, and they, they get employed somewhere. The, the first thing that comes into mind is, what's in it for me? You come to the Lord, you live your way of life, and you, you become a Christian, you are called by the name of the Lord, and still people ask the same question, what's in it for me? Um, and we're going to try to answer it. Try to, first of all, we want to restructure that question um, and, and ask it correctly and, and say, uh, is it worth it? Okay, is this worth it? Is what we are doing, is it worth it? Is it worth it to brave the cold and come to church on Sunday morning? Is it worth it for Pastor Has to leave his uh, homestead his family, his uh, uh, roots, and come and live in a, in a new place in Canada? Is it, uh, is it worth it for, for somebody to, to say that I used to be this, now I am this? Is it worth it to call upon the name of the Lord? Is it worth it to fast? Is it worth it to pray? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to be 
called a Christian to be called by the name of the Lord? Is it worth it to be ridiculed and scorned and called a Christian, being called intolerant and, and somebody who doesn't uh, uh, belong to the society, who think that they know the way and they want to show everybody you think you know everything. That's why you're always talking about your God. Is it worth it to face all that ridicule? Is it worth it? That's what we're trying to ask to, to answer today, this morning. We're trying to answer that question. Let's read that portion of scripture in chapter, 30, um, chapter 3 of the book of Malachi. And Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. If you can't find it yet, um, find where the Old Testament, the New Testament meets and go the other way. Go the left. Go to the left. And then one chapter, the second chapter, that will be my, that is the chapter that you're looking for. Okay? It's the last, the final book in the minor prophets. They are not called minor because they were small, but because their books were small. That's all. Uh, but otherwise, they had the same word from the Lord. And uh, we're going to read from this uh, 13. And it says, Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to, say, to serve the Lord. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking in the morning, as in morning before the Lord of hosts? Now we call the arrogant blessed. The evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another, and the Lord paid attention and heard them. A book of remembrance was written before him. Of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In the day when I make up my treasured possession, I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who serves him not. So here is a, is a situation. Uh, people are coming to God and they are uh, they're talking about God. And, and, and God being God, he hears all these conversations that we say about him. Some of the conversations we talk about them with other people. And some of these conversations we, we have them inside, in, within our hearts. And we complain before God and we say, really, is it really worth it to serve God? Is it, is it profitable? Before you get into any kind of business venture, you want to find out, is it profitable? Before you invest money in any company, you want to find out what is this record? What, how much money have they been making? If you, if you invest in the stock exchange, you want to see what the record has been. What is the news? What, is, what, are, what are the changes that are coming into this company before I make an investment into it? Because I don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. You don't want to lose your money. So you want to make sure that you are doing the right thing. And you also do not want to lose your time. You don't want to lose your life Wasting your life over something that is not profitable. And in this day and age, our young people are talking about FOMO. The fear of missing out. <laughs> in other words, if I become a Christian, I will miss out on the fun that other people are having. And they're scared of that. They're scared. The idea petrifies them. That I am growing up. And I am missing out while other people are having fun. And it's a, it's a legitimate question. Is it, a, is, it profit, is it legitimate? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to miss out on that fun? Is it worth it to invest your time and life in the things of God while other people are having fun? That's what we will want, want to look at today. And... Uh, it, it, it shows differently to different people with different experiences, depending on how your life has gone. You might have had some time in your, in your life where you, you have faced difficulties so much that you have asked God, what is it? Is this worth it? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, a few years ago, I mean, uh, a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I don't want to show how old I am, but it reveals it, looking at my girls. Uh, I had a friend, and uh, 
I, ha I had mutual friends that fell in love. So they, they, were, they loved God. They were so passionate about the Lord. They, they desired the best for each other. We believed that this was God bringing them together. And you, you would look at them. They were amazingly in love. They, you, you just like, oh, you know, you look at them like, oh, they're so in love. <laughs> and uh, at that time, I was, uh, I was in a different country, went back home to my country. We went, and then they followed afterwards, and, and they got married. We traveled about 300 miles to go to their wedding, and it was a beautiful wedding, and everything went well. They had, uh, the kids, the set of twins, everything went well. Um, and then things started changing for them. And they started drifting apart for whatever reason. And then the gentleman decided to leave the country, go to live in another country, working there. And he, you know, in, in, in time, they separated. And, and, and he visited me once, and he said to me, a statement that I, I couldn't believe. I say, you know what, man? I just discovered that divorce is not the unpardonable sin. And I'm like, what are you saying? And that showed that they, they had already started a, a, a path to the wrong place. And, and in a few years, they divorced. And on the final day, when, when this guy uh, displayed his new wife, uh, in public on Facebook, um, this woman called me. She asked me a question. She said, brother, you have known us for a long time. Tell me one thing. Can you answer one question? Does it help to be faithful? Is it profitable to be faithful? My heart was broken. I didn't know how to answer her. I didn't know what to say. I prayed with her, um, we talked, and she has slowly worked out her position and her love for the Lord and, and reworked her, her relationship with God. But the question was a very strong, pertinent question, is it worth it? I think about the history of the, uh, the African Americans in, 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 in America any time of the two, uh, during the time of, uh, of slavery, when they were told, they would sing songs of praise to the Lord while under persecution by the people who introduced them to the Lord. And, and they were singing with expectation, with hope. And people would question, is it worth it? To even talk about the Lord when you are under such conditions of slavery and oppression. Is it worth it? But it is during that time when, they, when the songs came out of their mouths. Songs like, by and by. When, when songs are uh, like, uh, we will understand it better by and by. And it says, often uh, we are made to wonder. Why it had been like this all day long while the others who are living in the sunshine, they are never molested even though they are in the wrong. Why is that so? Why is it seem, does it seem that some people actually do evil and seem to get away with it? Why is that so? Why is that so? We see it all the time. It plays up all the time. We know the people who are in prison who are not supposed to be in prison. People who are outside prison who are supposed to be in prison. There is no justice if it is not fully just. There is, what, is, what are we talking about? Is it worth it to serve the Lord? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? So I, I have four things that I want you to think about this morning. Uh, the first one is that your faith is going to be tested. Your faith is going to be tested. And the second thing that I want you to think about is that your faith is going to be affirmed. Okay? And the third thing that I want you to think about is that your faith is going to be vindicated. 
And the fourth thing that I want you to think about today is that, yes, it is worth it. So I'll walk you through these, these four things and just bring them, tie them back together at the end. So first of all, I want you to make sure that you notice that your faith is going to be what? Tested. So you are going to see things that are going to, to, to disappoint you, things that don't come together. You know, you, you, when prayers don't get answered in the way that you prayed them. Because sometimes you go before the Lord and we come to God with, with a set of instructions. Lord, I want you to do this. 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 In Jesus' name. <laughs> do you see the problem with that? The problem with that is that we do not know as much as God knows. And so when we come to God with a set of instructions, I wonder what posture God takes. He'll be like, mm-hmm. Lord, I want you to do this again. Mm -hmm. I see you. But I know what is best for you. I know your future more than you know it. I know your weaknesses. I know your strengths. I know how to rescue you. I know how to save you. I know how to supply your needs. I know how to answer you. I know how to be your God. So, it doesn't mean prayer shouldn't uh, we shouldn't pray. Does it mean that we shouldn't pray? Is it, does it mean that prayer is not profitable? No. God asks us to pray. He wants us to pray. There is a reason why He asks us to pray. But as we pray, we pray in understanding that it is not what we do that changes God. No. Uh, listen to what Job says. He says, what do we gain by praying in chapter 21 verse 15? What do we gain by praying? In other words, he got into that point. He got into a serious situation and he asked the question, what is this helpful for? How is this helping me? Why am I kneeling? Why am I fasting? And Isaiah chapter 58 verse 3 says, why have we even bowed down like bulrushes bowing down before God and in sackcloth and, and in tears and in fasting? Why are we fasting before God? How is it profitable? So, I'm saying that it, 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 all these situations are witness that your faith is going to be what? Tested. No matter how strong you are, no matter if you're a spiritual giant of sorts, your faith is going to be tested. Because there are some people who feel we are intimidatingly spiritual. You know that? You look at them and you feel like, oh my goodness, I wish I could be half what he is. But tell you what, it doesn't matter how much you appear to be a spiritual giant, your faith is going to be tested. And, uh, and, 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 and the results that we get that may, may, may intimidate us. You know, we, we might, we might we sometimes we might fail those tests. But God is patient with us. And, uh, and, and the other thing that we must notice when we, when we are tested is that the story is not complete. We don't know the full story yet. We don't know it yet. Okay. Second thing I said, your faith is going to be affirmed. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, that do not be weary because your labor is not in vain. In other words, is it worth it? No, your labor is not in vain. Your fasting is not in vain. Your praying is not in vain. Your, your efforts to read the word of God is not in vain. Everything that you are doing to, to give, as long as you are doing it for the Lord, it is not in vain. Nothing that you do for the Lord is going to be in vain. It's not in vain. And the Bible tells us, uh, uh, as we read this portion of Scripture, it says that your words have been hard to me. This is God complaining to us. Your words have been hard to me. Sometimes we say, we say hard things to the Lord. And the Bible tells us that we are able to grieve the Holy Spirit. And I believe that by grieving the Holy Spirit, is, uh, we, grieve, we grieve the Holy Spirit by sometimes saying things to God or about God that are offensive to God because we are speaking in our ignorance and our pain but in our lack of understanding and so God says your words are tough why? it's because you have said in other words you are not asking you are not asking a question it is it profitable you have actually made a conclusion you have looked at things and made a conclusion and said it is not profitable to serve the Lord 
And many times we come to the wrong conclusions because we don't know the whole, inf the whole story. We don't understand the full story. We don't have the full set of information that we need to get to in order to come to a conclusion, but we are quick to come to a conclusion because we, we think we get it. We think we get it. We think we understand everything that's going on. This is the ex example that I give. How many of you says they have dogs? How many dog people? Cat people? All right, good. If your dog is sick, are you going to have a discussion with their dog about what you're going to do about his sickness? Are you going to say, you know what, I'm thinking of taking you to the vet. What do you think about that? You'll not do that. You'll not speak to the cat. You'll not talk to the cat and tell the cat that, you know what, you were sick today. You need a shot. And the cat will not talk back to you and tell you, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood for a shot today. You don't have that discussion because of what? You don't have the same level of understanding. And sometimes the questions that we have for God are like the discussion that a cat wants to have with the master. The dog cannot suggest anything to you because it, 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 the level of understanding is very different. You might be great friends. You might have certain things that you like together, but there are certain things that you cannot communicate between the two of you. There is a gap between that cannot be filled by anything that you say, I am a responsible owner and I'm going to do this for my dog. And I believe that God being a responsible father, there are certain things that he does for his kids that we will never have full understanding. He's been there from eternity past and it is going to be there after we're gone. He is there. He is the everlasting father. So he knows everything. We need to rely on him. So our faith is affirmed when we understand then that it's not about us. It's about him. That's where our faith is affirmed. Okay, and when we when you read the portion of scripture that we read, it says, uh, "But even when you say is not profitable, and and you have called the arrogant, blessed, and evil doers only prosper, not only prosper but they get away with it, because we see these things, we say, and we don't understand why are the evil people prospering and getting away with it." But your faith is affirmed in verse 16. The Bible says that those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. Here is a word of hope. Those who fear the Lord, they came to church. Those who fear the Lord shared the word, talked to each other. And that's what exactly we are doing right now. If that's what we do every Sunday. That's the, reason, that's the reason why it is worth it to come together. Because we, we come together to talk to one another. And they talked to one another. And listen to what, what happened when they talked to one another. And the Lord paid attention. Remember when you complain, when people complain and say, is it profitable? It is not profitable. You know what happened? The Bible says that God was heard about that. But when they, when they affirmed one another, what happened? God's presence came. And God paid attention to them. So, when the righteous came together, God paid attention to them. Not, not only did he do that, but also he heard them. And a book of remembrance was written. In other words, there are certain things that God keeps as records. He keeps those records. And he says, I'm going to, I, am, I am going to make it happen for you. I have kept a record. I'm making a vow. I'm making a promise. He's going to make it happen for you. So, you will be vindicated. So, the faith will be vindicated in the sense that God is himself is going to come down and, uh, uh, and answer us and show us that it is worth it. Uh, Psalm uh, chapter 56, verse 8, the Bible tells us that you number my wanderings. So, in other words, all these questions that I have, all these troubles that I have, God hears them. And as long as I'm inquiring and finding out about him and saying, I will go fellowship with other believers. 
I will hear God is going to affirm it, affirm you and vindicate you. Okay. And the Bible tells us that not only will he do that, listen to us, he will not only hear us, he will only write a book of remembrance for those who feared him, but they shall be mine. In other words, I will protect you. I will be there for you. Even though you don't understand what is happening. Even though the little dog thinks he's going out to the park when he's going to the vet. He doesn't understand what's going on, but what is going on is good for you. And the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, For we know that all things work together for good to those who fear the Lord, who love the Lord, and are called according to his purpose. That's what exactly we mean. That we don't have to understand everything. It's good to seek understanding. Seek the Lord. But while you're seeking, know that we have limits in our knowledge. As a matter of fact, if somebody claims to know something, that shows that they don't know anything. Because the more you know about something, the more you realize how much there is to know. It doesn't matter what field of education you are in. It doesn't matter whether you're a medical doctor or you're a zoologist or you're a geologist. The more you study the geology, the more you realize that I don't know much about these things. The more you study about medicine, the more you realize, my goodness, this thing is complicated. It, it reveals more and more the width of the gap between your knowledge and God's knowledge. And so it is okay to seek knowledge. But while you're doing that, you should do it with humility, knowing that God knows more than I do. And because he knows more than I do, he knows what is best for me. And I need to trust him. So, uh, w when you realize this, you need to defer your judgment. Tr wait a little bit before you pass your judgment. Trust what God is saying. Don't lose the company of those who fear God. Come together. Be with others we, who fear the Lord. Let's talk about these things. Let's discuss these things. As we go out to our, to our small groups, let's talk about these things. Let's discuss. As we discuss, as we make those discussions, you know what? God's presence comes and dwells with us. The Bible tells us that where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in their midst. And what does that mean? It means when God is spoken about, he shows up. Why? It's because he loves you. He cares about you. Even though you don't understand. Even though the situation, what you're reading of the situation may not be uh, what you expect it to be, but God understands. So, I say your faith is going to be tested. Your faith is going to be affirmed. Your faith is going to be vindicated. And finally, I want you to know that, yes, it is worth it. It is worth it because we know who God is. We know that it's God who loves us. It is worth it because we will know that we will not be deceived by the temporary things that we see. Because these things that we see are passing. These are temporary things. Our, our reading of this temporary situation may not be correct. And so we trust him who has an eternal view. In other words, if I only see a small portion, I may not interpret it correctly. I would rather trust the one who has a larger uh, portion, the, 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 the one who understands the whole thing in its fullness, the whole history, the past, the present, and the future. The one who knows it all, I better trust him because my knowledge is, uh, is, is, is uh, limited and he is, is unlimited. And I want to say that I will have to, it is worth it because God has in, an indelible memory of what is going to what I am doing, what is going on right now in my life, and what is going to happen in the future. He knows everything. There is nothing lost. The Bible says that uh, uh, he, there is a book of memories that is written. There is a memory that is in, 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 uh, that cannot be deleted, that cannot be erased, that God has of every one of our struggles, every one of our experiences, every one of the prayers that we have prayed, every one of the things that, that we have, every one of the questions that we have. God knows everything and he wants to make it right. And he will in, in due time make it right for you. So you need to trust him. So it is worth it because we know that God's promises are trustworthy. When he says something, we can believe it. When, we see, when he reveals something in his word, we can hold on to it and trust that God will do it because he is God. We know that it is worth it because God helps us in our current struggles. We know that it is worth it because when I pray, God answers my prayer. When I, when I ask him, when I ask him, when I tell him, help me, Lord, I do not understand. He is there. He shows up. And the Bible tells us that he is the very present help in time of need. He is a very present help in time of need. It is worth it because 
if because there is joy in the fellowship of the righteous, in this fellowship, in this community, in these relationships, there is value in that. So it is worth it. Is it worth it to serve the Lord? Yes, it is worth it. And now we come to the final question. Is it worth it when the evil are prospering and we are not? When the evil get away with sin and we are expected to live in righteousness, is it worth it in a situation like that? And the Bible says, tells us, it confirms to us that yes, it is worth it. It is worth it because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It doesn't matter who you are. If you do things right before the Lord, God watches out for you. If you, if you, if you, if, if, if and it doesn't matter whether you see the evidence now or not, it doesn't matter. God watches out for your future. He knows everything. We're not, we're not, we're not doing, we can't do anything to win his favor. He loves us the way we are, but he also wants us to live according to his word. Live, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to the instructions. I've, let's talk about, let's have his presence in dwell, be among us. But the, when we discuss about him, when we talk about him, the Bible tells us this. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And the problem that we go through many times is that we, when we go through difficult times, we forget some of the benefits of, of being in the Lord. And I don't want you to forget about the benefits of being in the Lord. And the greatest benefit of all is to be called by his name, to be called a child of God. And if you read in that portion of scripture that we read, the Bible says that I will preserve you. Like one who preserves his own son. Here is a school that has hundreds of kids. Things happen here to kids all the time. But if something happens to one kid, that is mine that comes to this school. Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter where I am. I'll show up. I'll show up. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be there right now. And if you mess with that kid, oh my goodness, I will stand up. I'm like, who do you think you are? Because this is one that belongs to me. And tell you what, that's what God does even multiple times more about you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Listen to what the Bible says. He says, let your con conversation be without covetousness, because he himself said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Forget not all of his benefits. Is it worth it, ladies and gentlemen? Is it worth it? Yes. Yes. A thousand times over. Yes. It is worth it. It is worth it to live for the Lord. It is worth it to sacrifice for the Lord. It is worth it to give to the Lord. It is worth it to sacrifice, to give everything else that is in the world, everything else that the world has to offer, it is worth it to give it up for the sake of the kingdom of God. It is worth it. I want us to go before God in prayer today. I'll ask Pastor Mark to come and pray with us. But as we do so, I just want you to dedicate your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, help me in the times that I have failed, in the times that I've faced, with thought, faced difficulties and I thought that it wasn't worth it. Help me to realize that, yes, it is worth it to live my life for the Lord.